Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Shanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. Another day, another story about life in the USSR. The topic of today's video is military service in the Soviet Army. But before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that comrade Sergei did not serve in the military forces of the Soviet Union. And if you are interested in the topic of the Soviet Army and military service in the USSR, I would suggest my video Stranger Things of the Soviet Army – Ghosts, Elephants and Grandpas. So in my recent video about 1976 KGB report and American spies in Ukraine, I was talking about a couple of American spies that went to the Ukrainian city of Cherkasy and they were kind of mulling around local military outfit which was a tank division. So while researching for some pictures to come with the story, I actually come up to this one interesting album which I'm gonna show you today. What you see in this picture is the cover of Dembelski album, demobilization album, which pretty much is like a soldier's scrapbook dedicated to his discharge from the army service. It was a popular tradition back in the Soviet army as well as in modern days to make these photo albums that have uh, pictures and some other art dedicated to the military service. So today we're gonna flip through the pages of the mobilization album of this fine young man, Yuri Makagon, who served in the tank division back in 1982-1984. So he was a little bit older than me. Yuri was born in 1963, so he is eight years older than me. I was born in 1971. He was born in Simferopol, Crimea. And this is how he looked at the age of 18, right before being drafted. Really cool haircut and nice sport jersey, says Moscow and has Olympic circle. So that's 1980 vintage. So that's pretty cool. But before we begin, let's have a quick lesson of the Russian language or more like a Soviet military slang. Dembil. Dembil. So that's kind of an informal term for demobilization, demobilizacja, or the person that get discharged from a military service, got demobilized, he is called dembil. So they say dembila, dembils go on home. Dembil, dembil. And then we have dembilski album, demobilization album that came from the Dembil ward. Since the Soviet Union didn't have any Hobby Lobby, Michaels or any other kind of arts and crafts shops, those Dembilski albumi had to be done by hand. I mean, that was a lot of work. Uh, people were making their own drawings, cutting tiny letters and making everything pretty. So that was a lot of work to make a nice looking Dembilski album. There was an unwritten rule that this, a soldier was allowed to begin working on his Dembilski album at 100 days before his demobilization, so-called Stodnyi do Prikaza. All right, so let's flip the pages of the Dembilski album of our friend Yura Makagon. Look at this fine example of the Soviet tank yard. So we have a tank, looks like T-64, train that live in, the soldiers going home. On the top, there's the words Nazad, Darogi, and on the bottom right, нет, so there is no way of coming back. And on the bottom there is a small rhyme. Когда-нибудь, сойдясь с друзьями, мы вспомним через много лет, как в юности земле дарили тяжелый гусеничный след. And it can be translated like, sometimes, many years later, we'll get together with friends and we'll recall how we left uh, heavy tank tracks on earth. I mean, it sounds better in Russian. <laughs> a photo of uh, Yura's army bodies. They uh, pose in next, looks like what, a uh, horizontal bar for exercises. And there's more equipment way in the background, really tall ladder. They're wearing standard Soviet issue pilotka, those uh, silly looking hats. Here we see Yura on the right uh, with his friend wearing Soviet tankers or tankies. A uniform and by the way I found a book by another a person who also uh, served in the same uh, military outfit as Yura and he shared some interesting stories about 
uh, their training. So the story goes like this. In surrounding forests, sometimes you could see quite a strange picture. There will be uh, groups of Soviet tankers dressed in their black uniforms, wearing helmets, running in a groups of three. So that's a tank crew, you know, like that T-64 had three people, supposedly. And they will pretend like they ride in a tank. So one guy is a driver, you know, then you have uh, commander and Navochik, I think, will be the one that kind of points the cannon. And they will pretend like they ride in a tank and there will be nine groups like that. So that's the company. And they will keep a distance between each other, about 10 to 12 meters, like a tank supposed to. And they will be maneuvering and even making engine sounds. And that was a, this technique was called обучение танкистов через ноги, so teaching uh, soldiers through their legs. So it will save on fuel. It just kind of uh, building practice about how to uh, keep a distance while you in a column, how to maneuver. Uh, it's done everything how it's supposed to, except there were no tanks used. Another fun story was about uh, practice of shooting from the tank's cannon. Uh, so if the crew missed the target and a distance two kilometers, so a little bit over one mile, then as a punishment, they would be told to grab a projectile, so that shell, and then they have to run carrying that thing for that two kilometers distance. And then they touch the tank. So like this is you're going to still you're going to hit the target even if you missed. It's just you're gonna carry that shell all the way there, touch the target, and then you run back. And they give you 20 minutes to destroy the target by carrying the shell all the way there and back. So next time you won't miss. I found this photo quite interesting. So here our uh, friend Yura posing in the, we call it paradne form, so like a parade uniform at some uh, his friend or his relative's uh, wedding. So. I guess they'll let him go for a couple of days for that wedding or maybe after he got demobilized. He uh, visited that wedding and he was wearing his military uniform. So here Yura showed us standard Soviet soldier uniform from the 80s and 70s. Shiny boots, they had to be shiny. Pilotka. And uh, he served in the 41st Tank Guards division so that a little badge on his chest it's because he's the guard so that's the Gvardieska Divizia the guard division so this picture looks like it's when he just started his military service because he all buttoned up uh, he doesn't wear his uh, hat pilotka like all the way to the back so that's in the beginning of his military service and his belt is pretty tight uh, later on, it will be more loose to show that he is a, like a second year serviceman or is, he's almost Dembil. Here's a close shot of that badge, Guardia, the guards. It's available on eBay for about $20. I'm not sure what's going on in this picture. Uh, maybe Yura and his buddies were working on the repairs of the tanks. Or maybe they worked at the kitchen. Uh, during, you know, Soviet days... There was no like subcontractors that would cook food or whatever. There was pretty much soldiers doing everything. So they will send some soldiers to peel potatoes and help cooks. So that could be the case, but I'm not sure. There's another fine example of the soldier's art. So here's a picture of maybe his girlfriend and that he's waiting for her letters. So there's an envelope on the right, has an address, so Gorod Cherkasy, Voinskaya Chest. 48752, so uh, city of Cherkasy, military outfit 48152, I think it's the number. Uh, so leaves are falling, so it was uh, like, I miss you, or counting days till your letters, so pretty cool. And you know, quite often, if the young soldiers, like, could be former artists, he could skip his training just to help the older soldiers uh, to do their Dembilski album. And just a quick reminder, in the Soviet Union, it was a military draft. So every young man who uh, becomes 18 year old will be drafted in the fall or in the spring. So it's a 
осенний призыв, or весенний призыв, and uh, he will serve two years if it's an army, or three years if it's navy. This picture was definitely taken in the photo studio, and it's quite interesting. So two guys in the bottom, so Yura on the right and his friend, so they are uh, so-called study key grandpas. So they are on the second year. That's why they're wearing their ushanka hats. You see, kind of like tilted backwards. Uh, two guys in the back, the young soldiers, and they wear hats properly. And also, they buttoned all the way to the last button. The guys in the bottom, uh, they unbutton on the top. So that's kind of. You could tell just by their look uh, who is uh, first year, who is second year of service, and also they let their hair grow longer than supposed to be, which Yura is doing on this head. And he really pushed his head way back. Another interesting uh, photo portrait, once again it's made in a studio. So Yura and his friend definitely on their second year of service. Their Shanka heads pushed backwards. Hair is slightly longer than it's supposed to colors unbuttoned and his friend on the left he actually became a sergeant because he has a three stripes on his uh, shoulder patches and the letter ca is actually sa sovietska armia soviet army then you see those little tanks so they tanky and he also has a more badges besides guards badge um, the tiny badges on the right side on the well for us it's on the right for them it's on the left it's a Kamsamol tiny uh, badge but then the guy on the left besides the guards uh, badge there is also Atlichnik so he's like excellent soldier badge then he's a second grade uh, of something not sure what that badge you need to look it up and uh, the last smaller one like a star looking thing it's uh, for um, running or some other sports achievements I think it's get the O badge so the guy on the left he actually achieved quite a bit uh, during his military service in uh, in the tank division. So here's that badge. It's actually not GTO as I thought, but Voin Sportsman. So he's a soldier and he's a sportsman, second class. So he did some sports achievements, probably mostly in running, that he earned that badge. And the other badge is this one. It's a soldier of the second class. Not sure exactly what you need to do to earn second class, but it was also first class and third class. So this is the badge. And here's another fine example of the Soviet soldier art. So we got again, uh, I believe it's T-64 tank and the words went home, ушел домой. So they have a footprint, right? that the person abandoned its tank and went home. He's done his military service. And actually, I would like to show off and uh, show my uh, Soviet tank art. It's kind of like a version of KV-2 that I drew for my son when he used to play World of Tanks and he was really digging KV-2 tank. Here's quite an interesting photo. So this is a group of Soviet soldiers sitting on their tank and looks like they're on the railroad. Uh, so the tanks and the soldiers were shipped somewhere, probably for some military exercise. Another picture from the photo studio. Yura once again with his best friend. Here they show the Paradne Forma, wearing a winter overcoat, Chanel. Another cool picture, a group of Soviet soldiers posing with AK-47s at the, I'll call it watchtower or guards tower. Back in Kiev, we also had a military installation right in the city, and uh, I r rode the bus right by it for many years, and I always see a soldier standing up on similar tower, and I always felt bad for the guy when there was some nasty cold day, snowing or raining, and he had to stay there for hours at a time. This picture is totally awesome. So as you see, they have a number 200 that they made with their army belt. So they have 200 days left before the order about demobilization will be issued. So they pose in that, that day making the number from their belts. Another group photo, but here background is more interesting, I think. It just shows you there's a lot of sports equipment to uh, keep the Soviet soldiers physically fit. Physically fit. Here's another picture. From the photo studio, you and his best friend looks like it. Once again, their paradne forma 
heads pushed backwards. And now Yura got plenty of badges too. Second class soldier, guards, and the one in the middle on his chest, which his friend, his friend has one too. It's called Atlichnik Sovietskai Army. So it's like an excellent soldier of the Soviet Army. And here's the close shot of this badge. Atlichnik Sovietskai Army. Excellent soldier of the Soviet Army. Another photo of the Soviet soldier. My guess he was the best friend of Yura because he appeared in quite a few pictures. This is quite interesting. So this is the list of addresses and names of his best friends he served with. What I find quite interesting interesting is that most of people actually were from Ukraine. Usually during the Soviet days they tried to mix uh, young people quite a bit so people from Ukraine will be sent to like Far East to Siberia or to Kazakhstan to serve while people from Kazakhstan or Siberia will come to Ukraine. Here pretty much everyone is from Ukraine except one person from Krasnodarsky Krai and one person from Tajikistan. Otherwise everyone else, um, kind of like local, all from Ukraine. So Yura was demobilized on March 26, 1984. And March 26 is my mother's birthday. And this is actually the version of that uh, order, Prikaz Abovalnieni. So that's the people were waiting for two years uh, to be discharged. But this is interesting. So they wrote this order like it was written hundreds of years ago. This is like this old Russian style. And we tried to translate it using Google Translate. It's a little bit silly, but I'll just read what the Google translated. To dismiss from the ranks of the current army for the peaceful life as a reserve all the djembils, the djembila, who have served the term established by law for military service. To all commanders, submit a petition about condition of the chests. So, you know, they're going to carry their luggage going home. And demobilization amounts for the transfer to uh, com Gromadianske community. If not, uh, if those orders won't be completed, you need to sound the alarm and execute those guilty of these atrocities according to demobilization law. It's just a bunch of silly stuff, but it sounds really funny. According to the law, provide the oldest djembils with transport to ensure the normal transportation of their bodies to the place of residence of the community. So when you got discharged from army, uh, by the law, you were provided free train tickets so you could get home uh, free of charge. You just show the paper that you get demobilized and they'll provide you with a train ticket or bus ticket. Uh, stop all the uh, movements in order for the avoid of consequences of the unfortunate, <laughs> just silliness. And it continues. In the connection with the dismissal of Djembelis for a peaceful life, I order to shave and to recruit. So we had this expression, uh, so when you get drafted, right, they shave you bald. So it's the expression to shave into recruits. All the young people that were uh, born in the year of 1966 to shave all the youth who previously escaped uh, enrollment into the military in order to preserve a demobilization uh, peace. And I also direct you to establish order to impose a duty on all innocent people. This degree should be loudly announced to the heralds of aeronautics, naval and ground troops. And signed by Vayevoda. So that's like ancient uh, term for the main military leader of Ru in Russia. Vayevoda of all Russia, father Ustinov Dmitri, the son of Fyodor. So that time Marshal Ustinov was the... Uh, Marshal of Ministry of Defense. So this kind of like a silly way of present that long awaited demobilization order of 19, what is it, 84. Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this presentation of Dembilski album, Soviet soldier scrapbook. And a quick side note, that tank division doesn't exist anymore. Since Ukraine became independent back in 1991, there was no more need for large tank formations. So there's just a little uh, sign 
and the memories from soldiers like uh, Yuri Makagon. Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, don't forget to like it, share with your friends, and I'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. By the way, the cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at teespring.com. Just a friendly reminder that my book American Diaries is available on Amazon.com or shoot me an email if you would like to have a signed copy. Thank you! And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Ushanka show. For as little as one dollar you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union.